Hello and welcome to this channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to play Be Thou My Vision from my collection of simple fingerstyle hymn arrangements, volume one. And this is also available for purchase if you choose to support my channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is look up the available information that we have here. So it's in three fourths, meaning that a quarter note four will receive a beat and there's three quarter notes in each measure. So for example, measure one, bar one, we have three quarter notes. So here's beat one, beat two, beat three. So if you count this, it will be one and two and three and one, two, three and one and two and three and. Uh, rhythmically is very simple because really we're only using eighth notes and quarter notes here. And of course you have your dotted half note, which is really just one, two, three. But besides that, um, everything else is a simple uh, quarter note and eight notes. Lastly, we are combining position one and position two here. So what do I mean by that? Uh, it's just an easy way for me to communicate, you know, changing uh, right hand position. So in position uh, two, we're going to have our ring finger on the B string, middle on the G string, and index on the D. And our thumb is going to play the E and A bass note. So these three fingers are going to be there the whole time. Now when we switch to position one, all three fingers are going to go down a string and they're going to be there the whole time. And now your uh, thumb is going to play bass notes on the E, A and D string. So in this song, we're going to be using both positions. And um, the pattern, by the way, that, uh, that I'm using here is what I call the piano man pattern, because really what I'm trying to do here is kind of imitate the simple piano technique of going chord, bass, chord, bass, chord, bass, kind of like this. So I think it's a good idea to start by getting that pattern down and uh, be able to play it. Once you're able to play that pattern, uh, learning the song gets a lot easier. Hey, real quickly, if you want to learn fingerstyle, you might be interested in joining my academy. I have all my courses available here and also all my interactive hymn tabs, both the simple hymn library and the advanced hymn library. Uh, the interactive hymn tabs basically have the video on the left side and the tab sheet music on the right side. Of course, you can enlarge this uh, and you can slow down, speed it up, loop sections, makes learning a lot easier. Of course, I also have the PDF for offline learning. Um, the advanced hymn library are just basically hymns that are a lot more difficult to learn. And then the arranging workshop arrangements are just student arrangements and also my arrangements that we made in the workshops. So in the workshops, I have weekly workshops that you can join. Currently, we have two going on every week. The first one is how to make your arrangement. And we're trying to make a simple arrangement of Amazing Grace in the key of C this month. And the second one is called Fundamentals, where I teach you the basics uh, through learning a song. So you can check that out. If you miss the live events, there's uh, the replays available as well. And there's a lot more here that can help you with learning fingerstyle if you want to check it out. So to get this pattern down, start by thinking of playing the bass with your thumb and then chords are kind of separate that will be played with your uh, fingers. So on beat one, you're going to play bass and chord at the same time. Beat two is just going to be chord. Beat three is just going to be chord, like this. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now, uh, the tricky part is adding the bass note on the end. So you're going to go one bass, two bass, three bass, one bass, two bass, three bass, or one and two and three and. So for example, one and two. So bass note and chord on one, and on the end, bass note, and then chord, bass, chord, bass. Now generally we play the bass note on the downbeat, so this might feel a little off, because in this song we're playing the bass note on the end, on the upbeat. So it's a good idea to try to get that down first. And once you get that down, learning the song gets a lot easier. So let's start with bar one. So here in bar one, I just have a regular C chord here. And um, 
the rhythm is simple because we're just going to go one and two and three and and we are in position two here so we're going to go one and two and three and so on beat three on my left hand i'm just putting my pinky down so i'm still holding the c chord but i'm just going to put that pinky down and on the end i put it back up so one and two and three and now uh, bar two we're gonna go to this f chord with a c on the bass so it's really this chord um, i don't even remove my pinky but on the tab of course it says that it's just this one because really that's all i'm playing but i think it's a good idea to just leave your index finger there just in case you know you mess up and you play the B string, it'll still sound okay because that's part of the F chord. So what's going on here is we're coming from a C and we're going to go to this F over C. So it's a good idea to practice this transition first. And what I'm doing here is I'm just moving this middle finger down a string and then pinky goes down to the third fret D string. So practice this transition because this happens a lot. Okay, so on bar two, we're just gonna go one, two, right? F over C to C. So one, two, three, and. So if you see there on beat number three, there's that quick transition between C to F. So that's why it's a good idea to practice this transition first. Okay, so we're gonna go beat one, beat two, and then three and. And then back to C. Okay, so a bar two just goes. Now I'm in bar three. So bar three is the same as bar one. Okay, now let's go to bar four. So in bar four, I I don't even add that bass note to start. It's just that chord with my fingers. There's something happening here that I want you to notice. So just in this section, I'm going to position one. And then, so I'm coming from position two, and then I go position one, just so I can grab that melody note on the high E. And then on beat two, I go back to position two. Okay, so from bar number three, I'm going like this. Notice that, that subtle switch on my right hand just on beat one of measure four. Measure five, bar five. So from four, one and two and three and, right? One and two and three and. Bar six. So again, notice position two to position one. And we're going to be in position one all the way until bar nine. So from six, beat two, all the way to eight, the end of bar eight is going to be position one. And then back to position two on bar nine. So let's start on bar six again. We're going to go one and then switch on the right hand down a string. So one and two and three. And then bar seven. So from this G chord, um, think of just kind of moving your pinky two frets up. So you don't have to remove all your fingers and then position your fingers to play the chord. Think of how you can transition to the next chord without you know, moving your fingers too much. Uh, this is the idea called the economy of motion. So if I'm coming from this G chord going to that F chord, I would just kind of slide my pinky up two frets as a guide and then now I can place my other fingers so to play this F6 uh, we're going to bar the third fret and only up to the D string not the whole thing only up to the D string ring finger will play the G string fifth fret and pinky will will play the um, fifth fret high E string okay so bar seven same rhythmic pattern one and two and three but of course uh, the melody is moving here every beat so first beat is this one second one we're gonna 
lift up that pinky. And on B3, I'm going to put my pinky back down, but on the B string. One and two and three. Then on bar eight, go back to this G chord. But now my uh, bass note is on the D string, open D string here. One and two and three. Okay? One and two and three. Now, bar nine, back to position two. Oh, I love that tension there. So that's just one, two, and three, and uh, on the starting on the end of two, I have this um, open B string here. I'm gonna go and three and so one, two, and three and so those last uh, three uh, notes there, I'm playing with my ring finger and my middle finger. Okay, let's go to bar 10. On bar 10, we start with an F again. Rhythmically, that's just simple. It's just one, two, three. And again, you'll see the tra uh, transition between F and C happening a lot. So that's just one, two, three. And then 11, you've got this uh, bass movement happening. All right. So uh, that's just one, two, three, middle finger plays that bass note on the left hand. And then F with the A on the bass, because really what we're after is this sound. One, two, three, one, two, three. So bar 12, um, that's, that's gonna take the whole measure. 13, back to position one. Again, rhythmically, that's just simple. Uh, bar 14 is that F chord that we already learned. One and two, three and, okay. Now, coming from this F6 uh, chord, you'll notice that we end with our pinky here on the, um, on the B string fifth fret. So when we go to the next chord, that G5 chord on bar 15, again, you don't need to remove all your fingers and then reposition. Because when you go to the next chord, uh, you're gonna, your pinky is gonna be on the same string, just two frets lower. So you're, really what you wanna do is, um, after you play that note, you slide down. I'm still touching the string when I'm sliding down and then position to the next chord. So, of course that's really quick, but it's important to practice it slow at first. Right, when I'm transitioning to that G chord, I really am still touching that, uh, that B string. So if you play it in time, it might sound like this. Okay, so bar 15 is just a G chord, but this time with the ring finger on the bass note and pinky on that third fret B string. So one, two, three, and then on 16, back to position two. All right, that's really simple. So just one and two and three and bar 17, same thing, one and two and three except there's no bass note on the end here. So that's the first ending. The second ending is actually just the same. <laughs> just goes uh, one and two and three, right? So on the end there, I chose not to use the bass note, but just uh, the uh, second fret D string here. So, what happens is on the first time you play through, you go from bar one all the way to 17, and then you see this repeat sign. We're gonna go back up to the other repeat sign on bar one. You play it again all the way down to 16. Skip the first ending, because you just did that, and then go to the second ending. And that's it, you're done. <laughs>